Hi everybody, welcome back to the next video in my series updated for 2024 about how to use the Daisy Editor uh, PC mod. Um, and remember in the description below this video there's a link to the playlist that has all the videos in hopefully some sort of logical order and also the previous video and the next video so you can work through them. But in this one I wanted to go through some basic principles about how Daisy the game, or Daisy your server, spawns in loot in buildings so that when we actually come to use Daisy Editor we can better understand the files that we need to make and importantly the code we need to create as well. So if we go over here what you can see here so this is this is um, Daisy as you can see um, and if you're wandering around you kind of expect so you're wandering on this road you went into this police station here you expect to find some police stuff wouldn't you maybe there'd be some police trousers some jackets maybe a shotgun uh, maybe a scout or something like this maybe if you went over here to the shop you'd expect to find some armbands or maybe some uh, food or something like that um, and if you went to these sort of if you went into a greenhouse you might expect to find some um, some seeds or maybe a tomato or something like that and then in a house maybe some general purpose stuff so what we call this is the Daisy has something called the central loot economy. Your server has the central loot economy. So as it's running, it's constantly spawning in and spawning out um, loot items in different places um, according to what they are. So you find military stuff in military areas. You'll find medical stuff in medical areas. And this is constantly churning over. That's why you don't find the same stuff in the same place all of the time. So that's quite important. Now with the Daisy Editor, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding, um, let's have a look, let's add, say, say we add a house here, something like that. So let's say we add this house. Um, what we need to also tell the game is not only the position and the rotation and the height of where this house is, but we also need to be able to tell it, tell the game what sort of house it is, where it is, um, and we also need to make sure the game knows to spawn loot in it as well. So that's that's really important because if you want your additional structures to be part of the loot economy and behave like the loot economy does, it's not just a case of placing more structures. It's also a case of adjusting some other files. So let's go and look at what these files are. So let's go in. Um, so we're going to look at a PC server first. So on PC servers, what you need to do is you would go into, this is an I tried an example, but you go into the expert settings and you need to enable something called a file called the CFG gameplay file. Very important file that controls lots of things in the game. And what we also need to do is in the uh, server, in the, in the, in a folder, we need to put in something called our object spawner file. Now what I recommend you do, and I'll cover this in later tutorials, is that you create a custom, fol custom folder in the root directory of your mission. So for example, this server is running uh, Chernerus, so in daisyoffline.chernerus plus I've created a folder called custom, and inside this folder, this is where we put our object spawner files. The reason why I do this is because on console, we have to do it this way. Any custom files have to go in the custom folder, otherwise they don't work. And so I like to do the same for PC. So that file there, that this one that says nefTrainingArea.json, that's the file that we create with Daisy Editor, Editor that contains the details about the structure. So if we were to go and have a look at this file here, as you can see, so in this particular file, it's got land mill tent big one, land mill tent big one, so it's saying, look, um, at these coordinates, at this rotation, spawn in a military tent. So it's saying, right, do that. However, what that won't do is it won't tell the game what sort of loot to, to put in. So let's carry on. Let's look at some of these other files as well. So uh, this is the CFG gameplay file we talked about earlier. And what we do in the CFG gameplay file, we add to it in the object spawner array line the reference to that so we can see we've got custom nef uh, training area dot json and that, that's going to tell the, the server to load in that particular file now on consoles we do it slightly differently in the fact that you enable the cfg gameplay dot json not from the advanced features not from um 
not from the server dz.config file, but rather we do it in the general settings. And then the other bits are the same going and up uploading the custom bit. Now, the actual files that control um, what, um, that actually tell the, the server where to spawn in different loot are two files called map group pos and map group proto. You can see them down here. Now, you can't always open these up directly on your web browser, so sometimes it's best to download them. Then I'm open them up in something like um, um, Notepad++. And what map group pos contains, it's a list of every single structure or every single thing that will spawn probably sp maybe sp spawn loot in the game and on the particular map so let's find so there we go so there's a good one there so at those coordinates there a land shed m1 will spawn now this particular file it's not telling the game to spawn the land shed there it's just telling the server there is one there already one of the things to remember about the Daisy Editor mod is that we can add things to the map on console and PC, but we can't easily take things away. Now, when you get more advanced with it, you can use a different mod, a mod called Daisy Editor Loader, to take things away. But for, for the time being, we're just going to say that you can't, you can't take things away. Now, if you were to delete one of these lines, that particular thing wouldn't disappear. It would still spawn in... Um, uh, it would still be there on the map, but what would happen is it wouldn't have any loot. So one of the things we're going to do is when we use the Daisy edit editor and we create a um, an object spawner.json file, what we're also going to create is a map group pos.xml, and I like to call them a code snippet. So this code snippet will have the coordinates of and the type of building that we're going to spawn in and we're going to copy that into the map group pos where we're going to add it in and we're going to do that now the other important file is called the map group proto.xml which is that one there and you can again download that now the map group proto.xml uh, file what this does is this tells the server what particular loot should spawn so if we take the land shed m1 and we go to map group proto and we do a control F and we do a control V so we look for it we can see so here it is so this is the entry for the land shed M1 and so the group name is a land shed M1 um, it's an industrial uh, and farm thing um, and so what it's saying is where this um, where land sheds are M1s are you should spawn in farm and industrial equipment um, that are tools and containers um, and then you should spawn them at these coordinates around the particular uh, around the shed. So that's where you kind of get in the getting the randomness from it as well. And you've got things like loot max as well. So that controls how many how much loot spawns in. But we're not going to don't bother editing stuff like that. So a classic one would be something like a. Um, it's always good. I like to spawn in lots of tents. So if we look up tent, there we go. So land mill tent. So let's see. So if we spawn in a land mill tent and we look in the group, map group proto, here we go. So we can see that if we were to spawn in a land mill tent big two underscore five, that's military stuff, tools, containers, clothes, food, weapons, books and explosives. And it could spawn in all these different places. So you know how when you go into a tent, stuff isn't different. It's not, stuff isn't always in the same place, is it? Um, It'll be scattered around in different locations. When you get really used to the game, the, you know there are you know where things are going to spawn, don't you? <laughs> you know they're going to be in the top of this locker. You know they're going to be on the top of this um, table. They might not be there every time, but when they are there, that's where they tend to be. And so it's very important that anything that we add to the map group pause um, is included in the map group proto. Um, and it's very important that if we want stuff to spawn in for the structure that we add in, that we make sure we add it to the map group pos. Now, the reason why I say this is because within your Daisy editor, when you're using it, 
Um, there's lots and lots of different things that you can add in, and some of them will be specific to certain maps, like either Chernerus or Livonia or Enoch, as it's also known. And also, maybe when we get the new map, when we get the Frostline map, there may well be other assets as well that you'll be able to place on the map, but there won't be the relevant map group pos and map group proto entry. And that's a classic reason why uh, loot won't spawn in as part of the central loot economy in your particular thing. Also, as you're going through the file, you'll also find builder stuff. Um, now, builder stuff can only be used on PC servers that are also running the builder mod. So you always want to ignore this on console. Don't use any of the builder stuff. Use all the static stuff and the land stuff and things like that. And always check that the thing that you want to spawn in is included in the map group um, proto. So if we were to look for tent again. So let's look up tent. So, so land mill tent big. There we go. So let's say we wanted one of them, and we're gonna we're gonna put it down there, and we wanted loot to spawn in it. Now I'm not gonna show you how you'd create the snippet yet, but to know the fact that this is possible, we want to make sure that land underscore mill tent big is in here, don't we? So, so if we do a control F, so if we just do search for that, find all in current document. So we were looking for land mill tent big one underscore one. So there you go, land mill tent big one underscore one. And then we can check, right, there definitely is an entry. So to kind of go back and kind of summarize everything, so what's going to happen is we're going to use Daisy Editor to create an object spawner file, a .json file, which we're going to upload our server. And then we're going to use Daisy Editor to create a couple of code snippets as well. One will be a map group pos.xml snippet that will include um, the, th the buildings that we are spawning in with their orientation and their coordinates so that the game knows where they are. And we can also check that there's a map group proto entry just to make sure that the stuff will actually spawn. If there's no map group proto entry for the thing that we want to spawn in, um, we can put the entry in the map group pos, but no loot will spawn. So that's basically how it works. Um, so there we go. Hopefully that kind of explains things. Um, so when you're creating things in Daisy Editor, just think about that and just remember, it's not just about placing an object, placing something. It's also then about going doing the extra couple of steps, steps of um, exporting the right code so that the... Um, central loot economy will know that that particular building or that particular tent is there so it will spawn the right sort of stuff in there as you go along right so there we go hope you found that useful if you have hit like once you're on the same press subscribe and of course i'll see you again soon